So I think Jackson, our our native Bitcoin enthusiast, has a little bit of news about Lightning Network. Obviously, that's been in the news on and off for quite a while now. A lot of people are looking forward to it. So why don't you go ahead and tell us what is going on there? That's high honors if I'm the Bitcoin enthusiast at this table. Yeah, I, I yeah. like that. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, I've been talking about Lightning on this show pretty much since the first time I was been on here. I like to give an update here and there. Um, and we have some really big news lately. Um, so when we last talked about it, probably, the um, Lightning developers were, okay, we have this software out here, but it is completely beta. Do not use it. It will lose you money. And they have flipped from that stance to, okay, we're releasing this and go out there and get them and we're getting this thing going soon. So they actually released their software that is ready to go on the actual Bitcoin ta- chain. On, on the rim, on the main net, right? On the main net instead no of test the test net. net. Um, and it is still in beta. It, Jackson, I have a question. Ins- yeah, what is ahead. the technical distinction between uh, test net and main net? Uh, main net's real money. Yeah, <laughs> main net's kind real of how money. I so it. test okay. net is just okay. a yeah, fake yeah. Bitcoin network. I should know that, but that, I just like, what's the... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so just a fake Bitcoin network for... It works the exact same as Bitcoin, but their coins have no value. Gotcha. So you right. can gotcha. test it out on there. Um, so they're switching over to using mainnet. Um, it's still in beta. They still say be careful, um, but they're also like pressing people to build apps and use it as much as they can and get things going. Um, and they only have a um, what's it called command line version right. of the software out right now. Um, you pretty much have to be a somewhat technical yeah. developer to really use this stuff. Yeah, but which they, is good. Which that's is how good. it starts yeah. off. Usually, exactly. though. they yeah. are hinting um, that they are releasing um, their mobile wallet soon, which will be Damn. like actual I actually, GUI. I actually, easy to I use. literally just downloaded on one of our Android phones, Eclair. Yeah, I have that too. Uh, did you try it out today? So, yeah, that was I, I the, just checked. I that was the really next thing I was going to lead into. What exactly is Eclair? Uh, Eclair is a um, donut light client wallet <laughs> that for your phone. Um, for lightning, it's a, it's a lightning wallet, and yeah. it's built by a company out of France. This is mobile, or this is like it's laptop? Mobile. Mobile yeah, mobile. Android. Yeah, okay. it was on Android. Cool. I, I, while we're talking, we could uh, send transactions back and forth on Lightning Network. Oh, right. Now we could. <laughs> um, but anyway, I wanted to say one more thing. Um, Yes, the um, actual LND client that's command uh, line only right now is complicated and it's only for developers, but I figured it out and I sent my first lightning payment and it was awesome. I'm so really? freaking excited about it. I've, yeah. I've thought oh, about mainnet? doing it. I've, yeah. done so it on, mainnet, yeah. I've opened up channels because I downloaded the Zap Wallet by Jack Mahler. Uh-huh. Great job, Jack. Uh, I know you're not watching, but it's good, good <laughs> work. Um, but I, I, did you work with the Zap Wallet at all? Or um, did you, I, I have downloaded you, Zap Wallet before, but only Testnet. Okay. I don't think yeah, yeah. they have. I don't think they have a mainnet. But yeah. I was working on Testnet, like opening channels, close, you know, yeah, that type of stuff. It's really cool. You can see the beginning of Zap something. Wallet, and yeah. you could see the whole network, right? That which is pretty. I mean, there's nodes everywhere. Uh, you know, all over the world. It's pretty awesome to see, but sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was basically all I want to say is just that it's moving forward. It seems to be what um, I said a couple of weeks ago. I think that it's actually coming true is that we don't have to move slowly like we do with Bitcoin changes. We can move fast mm-hmm. and break things with lightning gotcha. on the second layer, which is something I'm really excited about. And it seems to actually be moving as fast as I can. Yeah, I, I have a, there's actually a, st- a story on moving fast and, break- and testing things. Uh, apparently, I read a few tweets um, from pretty prominent developers and Bitcoin users that a lot of nodes were being DDO or, uh, DDoS, right? DDoS attacked. Um, on, which is actually... On where? On Lightning Network? On Lightning, on Lightning, Lightning, Lightning Network, Lightning. yeah. Ah. So, well, it's actually... And people that... Uh, I get In the open source community, especially in Bitcoin, which is an adversarial environment, right? the developers actually like that, right? It's like, do okay, it now. we're getting tested yeah. early, right? Yeah. And someone's attacking it, and they don't know who necessarily is attacking it. You know, it might be could a, take guesses. It could be right. a white hat that's like testing things, or some you know false uh, flag. Yeah, so, or a black hat that just wants to uh, you know fuck things up. Right. Uh, but it's you know it's in like you said it's in mainnet and someone's attacking it and that's only going to make it stronger. But you know, uh, I think I saw today that there was like three thousand nodes online when I had my Zap wallet yeah, open. And the stat like, I like to look at is uh, how many bitcoins are actually in channels, channels. and we're up how to much like liquidity is on the network. Bitcoins, in yeah, the yeah. network or something like that. So three point two bitcoins. So it's it's probably pretty cheap right now to open up channels or oh uh, yeah. So that, that's that, that one thing that people to always what complain bitcoin about. Right? Fees are right now, right? Um, just on the main Bitcoin network, and they're cheap. So they're yeah. I was opening and closing channels like fifteen of them. Just trying oh, wow. to get everything. Really excited. And it costs like a cent per 
transaction. I'm really excited channel. to get uh, Lightning wallets in uh, the Edge app. You know, for yeah, are you guys working uh, on that? Can you guys make? <laughs> I mean, that not, I'm not working on it, but I've talked to our our uh, blockchain dev uh, Elron, who is a huge Bitcoin maximalist. Uh, you know, loves it. Uh, he's our n- blockchain dev, and he's excited about uh, Lightning. He's working on some other things right now, um, but this is definitely something that we would. I, I would. I would. You know, this is something that we need to implement if yeah. it, if it works at all. Yeah, uh, which I, I, I think I it think will. that this is going to be the future are, of mobile wallets. Yeah, there, at least there are definitely some details that need to be worked out in terms of user experience, and you know, right? Uh, the the devil's in the details on this, uh, but you know, the way that I'm thinking about it is, you know, the main, ch- you know, the Lightning wallet is your checking account, right? And you you load it up, um, and you know, you load it up with you know, a couple hundred bucks maybe, um, and you can use it, you know, instantly anywhere that accepts Bitcoin. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty powerful. I'm I'm really excited. You know, I'm much more excited about Lightning than any like other coin out there, so to speak. You know, um, it's definitely the next the next stage for Bitcoin in terms of mass adoption and just processing payments from one one main one. Uh, let's see. One from one transaction on the blockchain, you can create thousands, infinite. millions, you know, ostensibly infinite transaction from that one. So, what do you think is the strategy? I mean, there's probably no clear consensus uh, necessarily, but uh, so do they want to increase the block size once uh, Lightning Network's ready to go? Because that um, way, opening the channels hypothetically would be relatively cheap. Yeah, that's going to be a debate going forward. Yeah. But if you work out the math, like for a good population of the world to be able to open one channel um, per year, which seems relatively conservative, right? We'd need like a hundred megabyte block. So you'd have to imagine that that's kind of in the pipeline. And I don't think that it's really off the roadmap. Right. Um, but I think that they're going to be more innovative ideas for how to condense the data that we put on the blockchain. Um, and I think all of those will be, um, what do you mean? The, the math you said to yeah. for, yeah. Can you back that so, up? It's an interesting so thought. scaling the lightning network up to the entire world using it. Okay. Just as a, yeah. Yeah. And then you want to open and close channels every so often on the lightning network. Just if you want to onboard yourself, you have to open a channel. And then if there is some breakdown in the network, you might have to close your channel. So you have to be able to do some opens and some closes, which each take a Bitcoin transaction. So saying that everybody in the world needs one Bitcoin transaction per year, mm. then you have to have like a, one, 100 megabyte block one on-chain okay. transaction yeah. per year for everybody and, in yeah. the world and, and i think too. one transaction is very conservative i think in reality you want to be able to um have like a manipulate your channels a little bit more right. as well as do off-chain transactions just for like bigger purchases like a house a car or something like that the and the thing about that is it's uh, i'm imagining and the way a lot of the developers have described it and if they're done right users will not have to manually do any of that where it'll just be if if done right all that'll be abstracted away and it's just you basically press some buttons and swipe and your your wallet is loaded and there's some software in the background that wallets like us will basically automate you know the opening and closing of channels yeah um yeah, that's kind of what I expect. It seems like there's going to be uh, there's going to be a significant amount of work that'll need to be done on yes. the uh, user interface and user user experience uh, layer. Which I'll be honest, in cryptocurrency, that's a, an area that's kind of been neglected. I feel like uh, there are some apps and stuff out there that I I think have good user experiences, but the like majority edge. of them don't. You talking about Edge? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and like I know some people hate on Coinbase, but if I go on their app, like I know what buttons to press. It's pretty clear. Um, yes. but there really they're, aren't that too many. They're uh, cheating though. They That's true. They're off-chain yeah. stuff too. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's definitely not comparing but apples. You're to apples, completely but... right. It is a much better user experience, and we have to get there or better for this actually to take off. Right. That's where the the tension between centralization and decentralization, <laughs> where the centralization cent- centralized services will tend to be easier to use, where the right. decentralized uh, decentralized services will be more open and accessible, and more maybe resistant. freedom enhancing. Yeah. You know, where you know you tend to change you. I feel like efficiency and freedom kind of are almost opposites in a lot of different ways. Uh, the more efficient you are, the less free you are to do other things or 
um, you know, Coinbase does a really good job of streamlining things, but they they're not you're not really interacting with the Bitcoin network. You know, you're interacting with Coinbase servers. So I'm curious, Jackson, do you think uh, since there are other cryptocurrencies coming out, some of them even looking to implement Lightning Network themselves or excuse me, on their own chains, do you think that's giving the Bitcoin developers a little bit more uh, proverbial fire under their ass? Uh, or is this something where have they always been as, how would I say it, not conservative as they are now? Because you're saying that they're a little bit more open to breaking things? Or is that because it's the second layer, it's kind of optional? Um, I, I don't think so in that degree. Um, I think a couple of points on there is one, that the Lightning Network will be chain agnostic. So all the coins that have basic smart contracting um, abilities will be able to take advantage yeah. of the same Lightning Network that the Lightning developers are building now. Um, so that's one thing. And then the second thing is, I think that once the Lightning Network is working well and ubiquitous, you will take away that um, critique of Bitcoin that it's slow and expensive and hard to use. And I think without that um, to kind of rally on and try to like go get people to join a new cryptocurrency because Bitcoin's slow and expensive and it doesn't work very well, without that, I think uh, a lot of the crypto coins are going to fall and it'll be harder to get new ones started. So yeah, That's been a huge narrative for a lot of them is just like, oh, we have, we have so much throughput. You know, and most people don't understand that there's probably a cost to that, th that, uh, that easy solution to throughput. And it's Bitcoin has gone the, it's almost, yeah, it's like a, a much more elegant, you know, I, I've just been, I've bought into the second layer solution, right? Like just to me, I don't know if, you know, I'm not as advanced as some other ones that don't believe in it, but you know, a lot of the arguments that I've seen against lightning don't really add up. And a lot of the people that are building it and really understand it i mean they've they've convinced me that it's kind of the way forward um but what is it called i, I think what is it the the block size will always be a, a contentious issue because it's kind of a, it's just an arbitrary parameter uh that you know it it's really hard to know what exactly the right limit is you know and yeah you know, everyone has agree. their theories and it'll always be contentious um but i i think a lot of the the more reasonable people have and I have advocated for, you know, on-chain and off-chain scale. Like, there is no, you know, you just put all your all your horses, you know, or all your bet behind one horses, you know, you spread it out, diversify your uh, solutions. But, uh, yeah, we're – and I, Bitcoin Cash is really going to push the limit on – yeah, on chain do, scaling. They're doing I another mean, hard fork to – I really don't want to talk about it, but they're hard forking <laughs> again to – uh, increase their block size again when yeah, they're yeah. using less than half a percent of it whatever they're using now like they're nobody's yeah. using it and they're still increasing it i don't understand what the point of that is i don't go and talk about them i do want to talk about though uh, that um bit. monero has talked slightly in the past about um trying to alter monero to be able to use the lightning network um i haven't heard anything about that recently why can't they do you know um, any... I don't know the in depths of okay. Monero. Maybe Kylie knows better than I do. Just but right they don't now they have can't. those basic smart contracting abilities that you'd need. Um, you need to have multi sig, which I don't think okay. they have multi sig. That's one. And then you also need to have some sort of time delayed smart contracts. And I don't know if they have okay. that. Okay. The hash time lock. Uh, I forgot what's the HTLC. Uh, oh, hash time yeah. lock verify. Yeah, something yeah. like that, yeah. Yeah, so in the past, I remember uh, early on, you know, maybe a year ago or more, uh, some of the leadership within Monero seemed a, a bit more against second layer solutions. But I think as I, as I remember it, it used to be that every transaction was not private, but they decided to turn it on so that every transaction is private by default. And by doing that, they increase the uh, the footprint of each transaction, which has caused during the last year. So it's caused the uh, mining fees for Monero to be a lot. I think they might be the biggest or at least one of the largest uh, out of all the cryptocurrencies, which, OK, privacy costs a bit. But I think maybe they didn't foresee it being this big of an issue. So you've seen the rhetoric around second layer uh, scaling solutions become quite a bit more. They're a lot more open to it now. And it's at the point where they're actually openly talking about uh, using a Mimble Wimble sidechain, I think is the, uh, that's what the, it sounds like that's what the plan is. The uh, shit's getting intense. <laughs> yeah, and right. unfortunately, um, that sort of solution, from what I understand, is still more than a year away. 
So it's something where there are little kind of stop gaps on the way there. But uh, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's considered Lightning Network though. That's just a, a different second layer. Yeah, solution. that wouldn't be Lightning Network. But uh, it strikes me I think that the same capabilities you'd need to make a side chain would also be the same capabilities you would need to use Lightning Network. Well, what so. would make something second layer? Just that it only uses the bottom layer in the in in the event of a dispute. I would think that or you can cut out. That, would that be the good, definition? That's a pretty good description. Well, right, because it, it takes it off chain so you can use a, a, a network right. on top, right? And you don't have to use all the... Yeah, because you, right? you, you, you only have the, the settlement time. transactions. So you can cut out the middle stuff, which is... Uh, that's why the thing, the thing is with Mimblewimble, that's exactly how it works is it's... Um, I don't remember if it's range proofs or if it's confidential transactions, but they you can have a bunch of transactions and then all they care about is whether the sum of them is correct, so you can cut out a bunch of the middle transactions. So it sounds like it'll be a good solution. I don't know if that's technically considered Lightning Network, though. You know, so and some of that might depend on the implementation, which is still like over a year away. Um, but yeah, there's some exciting stuff happening.